Hi, my name is Mike Rooney. I'm the head of school here at Portsmouth Christian Academy. Welcome back to our campus for the 21-22 school year. We can't wait to welcome 136 new students and their families and all the other families coming back. So good to have you. Welcome to the briefing room. It's our new way to communicate with you on a monthly basis, and we're going to cover three big things every month. Uh, the first is, what are the big news items that are happening here on campus or off campus? So this is Liza Corsa running in the, in the Olympics. Second, we're going to cover on a calendar item looking at about 30 to 40 days so you can plan on how to plug in. And lastly, we're going to bring in some interviews of some amazing members of our community to help you understand how to better plug in or to be better informed about things going on around the school. So we can't wait to see you on campus and hope you enjoy the briefing room. Welcome to this portion of the briefing room. What we want to do every month is do a real quick look ahead as to what's coming your way. Especially for new families, we're going to cover down on some of the key items that you should be putting on your calendar or may affect how you're thinking about your evening schedule or even what you bring to school the next day. So let's get going. So next week is Welcome Week. That's the whole theme. And as you know, we've published on many different places the different schedules for open houses, different arrivals. But we know by next Thursday, the 2nd of September, we have all of our students on campus and we're so excited. By the 3rd on Friday, we have an all-school chapel culminating a great week and really hoping that all the new families feel like they've got established and they know what to do. The next week, really talk about taking flight. This is the week in which you start to really feel like you've got some rhythms and drop off and pick up, class schedules and all those things arranged. As I look at the week, I'm looking at the calendar. Um, it's a short week. It's only four days due to Labor Day on Monday. We have no school. And the first night is back to school night, 6 to 8 p.m. at our upper school, followed on Thursday night by our upper school picture day and then our lower school back to school night that evening on Thursday. So taking flight where moms and dads, uh, you could come meet your uh, student, your kids' teachers and uh, get a great start as we take flight together. Hey, also on Take Flight Week, we have two great games. Home games here invite you to join us on the sidelines. On Wednesday, our men's team takes on Newmarket. On Thursday, the women bring Newmarket, host them here. Newmarket's a great team, a great rival of ours, and uh, we hope you come out and show equal pride as we take on, take on the Newmarket teams. So after Take Flight Week, we're going to week three. It's about leadership, it's about community, it's about testing. So let's start with testing. So testing, we start at the lower school, our NEWA testing, our fall sequence. So we do a fall, a winter, and a spring testing. This starts a three-week period where your sons and daughters are going to assess their language arts and their math skills for the fall. We'll establish a baseline. Be paying attention to when your son or daughter is going to be uh, doing that testing, get them a good night's sleep, but we're going to start three weeks of testing that week. Leadership and community. The upper school takes their annual retreat up to Brookwoods for a single day. The leaders will be going up actually a day or two ahead of time to prep, prep the t uh, time and prep for the year, uh, but they're going to have a great Brookwoods experience the entire upper school. On the sports side of the house, uh, we've got some really exciting things. First, our junior high home teams kick off. This is when our junior high sports start for the first time right here on home court, home campus. So if you're a junior high family, you have a son or daughter interested in junior high sports, be paying attention in the news of the week. We've got ways to sign up. This is when games are starting. And then the big event for us, cross country. PCA is known for its great runners, both men and women. Brianna Malone is the returning state champion in cross country for Division Three, and she'll be running right here on home course with, we think, up to six other teams, the biggest home meet we've ever had. On the men's side, Luke O'Halloran and Sam Harrington are already uh, state contenders and are great runners. And so they'll be leading both our teams and really hoping lead the, our Eagles uh, to championship type times right here on home courses that they're really familiar with. So come join us, cheer on our runners uh, across the board. So as we shift to the fourth week of school, uh, some really amazing events continue to happen, but a little bit different than just academics. A little bit more fun in some cases. The first is we have the auction kickoff on Thursday. That's all of our families are invited to help us with our annual fundraising event, scholarships for more families to come in and join sons, your sons and daughters, make PCA even better. That's what we're doing on that Thursday. Again, watch, look for the news of the week, how to sign up. We'd love to see you on campus and tell you more about what the auction involves and how you can be a part of it. 
Friday night is the traditional eighth grade lock-in. It's a great event. So if you have uh, your son or daughter's in eighth grade, obviously be looking for details. You'll hear, hear more. But if your son or daughter's in fifth, sixth, or seventh grade, just know that that's something coming up. It's a great highlight for the eighth grade class to really bond spiritually and in terms of community. As we roll into the last week in September, a couple other big events to highlight. At the upper school, if you're interested in pursuing Christian education beyond PCA, we're going to be hosting a regional Christian college fair. We encourage you to sign up, come on by, bring some friends, and check out whether you're a senior, whether you're a junior, sophomore, freshman, even in junior high. You want to see what Christian colleges are having to offer these days? Come on by. We look forward to hosting you. The other focus that week, the last week of September, is believe it or not, we're already halfway through the first quarter. So you should be expecting is some uh, assignments coming due as teachers get their first series of assignments and grades entered in mid-quarter. It's the first sort of check uh, for us to make sure that your son or daughter is on track. Also be checking Veracross about this point. If your son or daughter is doing particularly well, that's awesome. We celebrate with you. If they're being challenged in one or two areas, this is the time for sure to start to reach out, make sure that we've got uh, your child on track and thriving here at PCA. So as we turn the corner into October, just a quick preview, that first week in October on Sunday night, we're trying to pull off something we've never done here. And that is a family worship night, night of worship music here on campus. Again, students, whether uh, maybe from your home church, even you, moms and dads, grandparents who have music talent and you just like to help lead us in worship or just join us for worship, that's what we're after. Uh, the next big thing that week is that's homecoming week. So you can see a whole lot of communication but if you're at the lower school, it involves a different theme every day, and you're going to get dressed up. So be listening for that first week of October, right after mid-quarter. And then as we head into the, uh, the weekend, uh, we're going to be welcoming our alumni, alumni back. Um, and on Friday night, uh, we have a special volleyball whiteout game. That night, we have a bonfire for the high, upper school uh, outside. And on Saturday, we have a whole series of cross-country events on campus. Uh, we have soccer uh, men's and women's, and that evening out uh, here, we do a dig pink uh, volleyball tournament in which dads, moms, uh, alumni, you can all come back. We all participate, and we're raising funds uh, to help defeat breast cancer, hopefully in our generation. Plus, it's just a ton of fun. Uh, dig pink tournament caps off homecoming weekend uh, right here at PCA. So that's a preview into October. So, again, this is the briefing and uh, give you an idea of what's coming, tempo of the school. Can't wait to see you on campus. Welcome to the extended section of the briefing room. We have Mrs. Elena Russo with us. Elena, it's great to have you back, back together again, working on some big projects for the school. We're gonna talk about two big things. The first is how to make PCAs accessible to as many families that want an excellent biblical education. And the second one is really how do we further the mission of the school? And you're involved in both of them. Uh, tell me a little bit uh, about how we make PCA accessible to those families. So I think to put it in context against this year's theme verse, which is from the book of Matthew, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good work and glorify your father in heaven. So one of the amazing pieces about PCA is we know from feedback that we are a beacon of his light and his love in the Seacoast region mm -hmm. and beyond, quite frankly. Right. And so we talk about accessibility. Uh, in my role as the variable tuition director and formerly as the director of enrollment, I'm, I'm able to see that affordability for many families means accessibility. Mm. Um, and so the variable tuition program brings those two ideas together, um, at least the financial side of accessibility. And so variable tuition extends to qualified families based pretty much on income level, financial need, um, extends to them a rate that may be below the published rate. Okay. Right. And in so doing, it allows PCA to be more accessible to a lot of good families who want to be a part, who see our mission mm -hmm. and want their children to experience. It. So in a nutshell, that's what variable tuition does. That's the way that we can bring bridge that affordability gap. Right. 
And so um, is this variable tuition program unique to PCA? How long has it been running? Tell us a little bit about our track record. Yeah, so variable tuition in its former construct was basically financial aid, right? Mm -hmm. So you have heard that before, you see it in colleges. It was what we called it here. But in reality, it was really more of this idea of variable tuition. We know how much it mm. takes to run the school for each child, which by the way is, is more than the published rate that we see on our website, mm -hmm. right? Um, so every family actually benefits and is not seeing the actual cost of a PCA education. Um, but then there's another group of folks for whom even that published rate would be out of reach yeah. for them. And so this allows our third party assessor to assess a family's financial need, make a recommendation of their need to us, and then we extend a, a rate that is typically between 50 and 100% of, of the published rate. Yeah. So one of the things that at least it seems to me, or there's a, there's a question of, um, you know, how is this different than tuition assistance? And we've talked quite a bit about it. And I think one of the things that struck me in the, you know, the, now that going on to the third year I've been here is that every family who comes to PCA sacrifices significantly of what they could do, certainly financially. Sure. Right. And so I think one of the things that struck me about the program that when I got here was really asking every family to proportionally sacrifice at about the same level based on their capacities as a family. That's right. And so, you know, I, I think as you or someone said that everybody's pulling hard on the sled and everybody's pulling about at the same intensity level. And right. that's what makes PCA work. So the variable tuition program to me, there is a difference with this is if you don't do variable tuition, you don't build a larger community. Uh, where tuition assistance, I think, sort of slices it, what's for you, what's for you, what's mm -hmm. for you. Right. Uh, variable tuition is a uh, much more has a growth overall growth mindset. Um, so when you get enough people coming, you start to see the dynamics to make the school work. Okay. So I don't know anything you want to add to that because you and I have talked about this at length. Well, so I think what is uh, you know when you talk about what's unique about it, one of the things that I get to see on the other side of variable tuition is I see the families that are are helped. I also see those same families giving back. Yeah. They give back either through volunteering at our school, which then makes the experience for my child and your child and all of the other children a better experience, better school experience. It's mm -hmm. one of the ways that we are able to offer some of what we offer that builds the special moments yeah. uh, and the memories throughout the year for our kids and for our families. Um, but the other way too is Many of these families, their financial need is, is a moment in time for them. And it is not a, uh, a forever need. So many of these families are later giving back when they are in a right. position of greater financial, financial access, excuse me, financial access. Right. So they're then in turn giving back and they, they are weaning themselves, self-weaning, off of our variable tuition program and then giving back so that we can pay it forward to another family. Right. And we know also that a lot of these families, through their word of mouth, they communicate that. And That's right. It starts to strengthen the school, not just in a given year, even year mm -hmm. to year, but over multiple years. That's right. So to put that in perspective, right now, as we are talking, we have 137 new students right. who are joining our ranks and that's growing. By the time this message is probably actually delivered, we're gonna see that number grow even more. And we have, I think it's 425, 27, I'm not sure, it's up there. Yeah. Uh, returning families. 50% mm -hmm. of both of those groups could not, the new families could not join, could not send their kids. Mm -hmm. The families who are re-enrolling could not return without variable tuition those same families are going to in turn give back to our community and make it a better experience for everyone. Yeah. I think from our perspective, we see fuller classrooms, mm -hmm. those teachers finding that right balance. You right. see the teams are fuller, those mm -hmm. ensembles. Yes. Um, and so uh, families who really want to be here and now they all have an opportunity to do it. So right. it's really exciting. Yeah. So variable tuition, 
there's some transitions coming, mostly on people, but not on program. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so we've got our, you know, the program in general is you apply through our website. You've seen the, the links, you've seen the emails, you apply third-party assessor. You're working with them to submit your documentation. They make the recommendation back to us. You get a notification from us. Um, I am the person who has worked with most of our families over these past few years. Right. Um, going to continue to work with our families over the next few months, but there is going to be a transition. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Okay, so the transition for me is moving into this role of development. Yeah, so I'm very thankful for all that you've done and director of it. If you didn't know, for the new family, Selena was the director of enrollment, which included admissions and marketing uh, for several years. Uh, she retained, and the variable tuition is part of that. She retained the variable tuition, had stepped back for a little bit with her family. Um, but we had this real need in development, and I had asked Elena if she would consider the role, and she said yes. So she's back in the role of development, and tell people what development's about. Because we had, since I've been here, it's not something we've talked about a lot in those terms. That's right. So I think, I know when I first, uh, for many years, I didn't know what development even meant out in the world. And I think to this day, many of our families don't know what development is. So development here at PCA is comprised of a few different functions, probably the biggest of which is um, funds, right? Mm -hmm. So funds that support things like variable tuition or enhancements to our school, long-term projects that allow us to deliver on the mission of our school. Yeah. Uh, you know, to give you an example of what some of those projects look like, um, one of the most talked about ones over the recent years has been our waterfront project. Yeah. Uh, all of our all of our community benefits from the waterfront project. Big project enhances our school. Um, we've also seen things like uh, families and donors who uh, want to come alongside of our mission in a in a particular way that that also satisfies their passions. So one in particular uh, has a heart for leadership and leadership development. Yeah, so our leadership program was born out of this, right? right? Yeah. So someone came alongside and said, I want to support preparing our students for life and building up our leaders. And that that program is has been supported by those dollars that were donated in. Yeah, so I think, you know, they're the other piece to this is that, uh, you know, the, the leadership of the school, the board in mm -hmm. particular, talking to families, talking to the staff and faculty, have, have a kernel of an idea, right? But we don't have the resources right now because mm -hmm. we're running a full program. Mm -hmm. And so we match that kernel of an idea of what could be right. with a, a family that really has an interest or, you know, one of our friends says, that, you know, their pilot light really lights them. And then we line that together. The leadership program is a perfect example of that, mm -hmm. uh, and the reason why we can we can start this uh, this right. effort, and we're really thankful for it. Yeah, and other things, you know. So we talk about you know, PCA. We believe in people and programs and places, um, and people first. People first. People first. So on that, can I, yeah. just to sort of digress a little bit. So the main way people have seen development, though we haven't called it development at PCA well before I got here, mm -hmm. and to put people first was really scholarship program, which with variable tuition was what enabled us mm -hmm. to, to, to bridge these gaps. So how would they see that? What does that look like when they see things in the news of the week or they hear us talking about it? What is What does the scholarship program fundraising look like? So we've got an opportunity for business owners who pay business profit or business enterprise taxes uh, or individuals who pay um, dividend and interest taxes, right. right? Both groups of those can actually earn a tax credit by donating into either the Giving and Going Alliance or the Children's Scholarship Fund. Mm -hmm. Both of those are state approved uh, funds, organizations that give families, the same families we were talking about a little while ago with variable tuition, an extra boost to be able to attend and send their kids to experience the excellent PCA education that we offer here. Um, 
And so there's an opportunity in there if, if we've got business owners in our community or individuals who pay IND tax, this is for you. It's another way you can come alongside, mm -hmm. help us meet our mission, and also put put your dollars to work. Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a win 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 in the state it of New is. Hampshire allows us to do this, and That's we're right. really thankful for it. That's right. Talk to me a little bit about e annual fund slash eco fund. Sometimes we use those terms interchangeably. That's right. So our annual fund, our eagle fund, uh, they're actually one and the same, and I, I believe one was coined. The eagle fund was coined many years ago, um, but in reality, it is our annual fund. And we, so we are raising funds every year. Uh, we do that through annual events like our gala in the fall, um, our auction in the spring, mm -hmm. and then everywhere in between. With Sponsor a Child is all about. Sponsor a Child is all about variable tuition. That money goes actually 100% to to our, to our tuition program, variable tuition. And since I've been here, that's been our main effort, right? right. So as we've tried to regrow enrollment right. uh, back mm -hmm. and to make this more affordable and accessible, um, and we've seen a lot of good growth, but that's not the only thing that development does. What else does development do here at PCA? Yeah, so under that umbrella of development is also volunteer program. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about people places and programs and that people sits at the very top of, of the priorities. Um, this is all about people. Volunteers. This is bringing volunteers together. Volunteers in, typically it's a physical capacity, yep. right? So it's everything from helping and supporting in IT or wiring, it's um, going on field trips, it's painting, uh, junior Lunch. high. Is going to see it's yeah. it's the lunch program yeah. exactly. Uh, you can see throughout our school every year there's a, a new set of projects that parents you can get involved in, grandparents yeah. you can get involved in, uh, to help bridge the gaps. Yeah, and I think you know I'd say to our our community that even in this time of COVID, even last year we had a very vibrant mm -hmm. uh, volunteer really effort across the board. Many of you have have really responded in great ways mm -hmm. and we're so thankful, but we're a community that invites your engagement. And so our volunteer program is probably the, mm -hmm. the forefront of how to do that. So any tips if they want to get involved real quick? Yeah. So the first thing I would tell you to do is respond when you get your next now, respond in there in the volunteer corner, look for that. Um, click on that link, fill out the volunteer format form, and when, once you're done, it'll automatically get sent. You don't have to fill out hand paperwork. You don't have to deliver it to anybody. Just fill that out and, and, and make sure you actually complete your background check because background checks are very important. You want your child, you trust us as a school in the safety of your children. Obviously you trust us to educate your children. We also make sure we have a safe environment for our kids and just as you want to make sure that every faculty member, every staff has been vetted, we also want to make sure, we as parents want to make sure that whoever's chaperoning the field trip or is in the building with the kids right. is also vetted and safe. It extends everywhere. So it's a little bit of an extra bit for you. It's a little bit more work for you to go get that background check. But I, I know you can appreciate why that is so important. Yeah. Yeah, we sure appreciate your willingness to take that uh, additional right. step. Yeah. So thank you yeah. in advance. Uh, I think the other pieces of development that maybe elude folks is our alumni connections. Right. So we are working on building those now because our school is over 40 years old, but in reality, our, our uh, alumni alumni are young. Yeah, they're um, relatively young. So I think the first graduate of our... PCA High School at the time, now the upper school, was in 1997. Mm. Um, so we're just 23 years in. Right. And we just had our thousandth graduate in That's the right. class of 21. Um, so you can imagine that, uh, you know, we're actually seeing some of our alumni come back on staff and faculty, and we're seeing some of our alumni bring their kids, yeah. which is really exciting. Talk about a cool legacy. It is. Yeah. It is really neat. Um, I think one of the things that we get asked a lot is how can families get involved? 
Um, development is all about partnering. Um, for those of you who have means, uh, financial means, we would love to engage with you to advance your passion that is in alignment with our mission. Yeah. Um, if, if you can, attend the gala, attend the auction, um, donate directly to our annual fund, our Eagle Fund. Um, volunteers, volunteer, complete the background check. Um, I think if you're a New Hampshire business owner or a resident who pays those taxes we talked about earlier, right. donate into the Giving and Going Alliance and the Children's Scholarship Fund. Um, and if your network allows you to connect with like-minded individuals or business owners um, who are in a position to support our efforts, make an introduction for us. Uh, you know, and we talked earlier about the overarching theme verse this year to let your light shine. This is an opportunity through development, through the different facets of development to let your light shine right. and, and really to add your light to our light so that collectively mm -hmm. um, we are, we're a beacon. I talked about it earlier. We're a beacon of his light and his love to the glory of his name. Yeah, absolutely. And really that's what this is about. Our mission, uh, when you look at it extended, it ripples out is to work through your children, your grandchildren, your sons and daughters, as they see their potential yeah. grow, they focus on Christ as graduates and they impact our world for the good and good is defined by God. And so we're so thankful for the opportunity to partner with mm -hmm. families uh, every day on campus. That's right. Uh, so thankful to partner with families who have a vision for more, who see multiple years out uh, for families that are willing to bring their talents mm -hmm. to bear and their time and give so generously and to lift us up. Um, this school would not exist. I mean, when I was coming in, um, my father spent a lot of time with the school, uh, often told me that, you know, there are a lot of reasons why PCA should never exist, but the mind, the spirit of generosity, mm -hmm. um, the long-term vision about what God is doing in the Seacoast area of New England mm -hmm. has brought a whole community, whole multiple generations. So, you know, being a part of development is is seeing that play out right. and uh, how that could do that. So we're really excited, Elena, that you would continue in your service to PCA here to help yeah. lead that. You've got a great team, Summer Heath, yes. um, you Elizabeth know, Elizabeth Nando, has run the most incredible auction effort that I've seen. Again, so many volunteers and generous people through that. And then Trish Garden and her outreach with alumni. That's right. And uh, really making it all work. So I'm uh, really thankful again. Uh, and mostly thankful for, for all of you who have, continue, and are even considering uh, supporting PCA's long-term mission, uh, not just for today, but also for tomorrow. So thank you. And we'll see you on campus soon. You sure will. We'll see you on campus soon. Uh, go Eagles. Woohoo!